All right, the top 20 greatest hockey cards of all time. So before I get into this list, I'm going to go through my requirements that I that I put together for this. Um, there's no rookie patch auto cards in this list, no autograph cards in general. You know, I, I know the upper deck, the cup is a pretty big deal, as well as SB authentic cards. Um, but I want to cl- include really just key base cards. And, and, and I want to include cards that are that have always been a big deal um, to hockey collectors. I'm only going to feature one card per player as well. Um, and some of these players aren't even in the top 100 greatest hockey players list. But they are part of important sets. And they were stars of their time. And, and they're, they're incredibly important for the early growth of hockey. And some of these players I talk about aren't even Hall of Famers. But they're... they're, they're they're true rarities um, in the hobby. Without further ado, at number 20, the 1910 C56 Fred Cyclone Taylor. This is his rookie card. Um, this is he, Fred Taylor was one of the first stars of hockey. Um, he was incredibly fast, which is how he got his nick- nickname, the Cyclone. And the C56 set is considered one of the first true hockey cards ever issued. Um, they're issued inside of packs of Imperial Tobacco cigarettes in Canada. This is the same time period as the T206 cards. However, these these cards, the C56 cards, are, are much, much, much more scarce. Um, this Fred Cyclone rookie card only has a total pop between PSA and SEC of just 162. So these are much scarcer than the T206 cards, or, or really most tobacco cards in baseball. Um, and what you'll find on this list is, is in general, hockey cards are, are, are scarce um, across all vintage periods. Um, much, much scarcer than, say, uh, uh, baseball and uh, football. Um, all right, so number 19, the 1910 C56 Nuzi Lalanda. Um, he played 23 seasons and was just a prolific scorer at the time. He was also a really great lacrosse player. He was the star of the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, he was teammates with Fred Taylor, the player I mentioned before. Um, there was just a pop of 169, uh, and he was he was one of the early greats. And, and like I said, he was a, a, a two sports superstar. Um, lacrosse was a, was a big deal uh, in Canada as well. So, all right, number 18, the 1955 Parkhurst. Jacques Plant. He was the inventor of the goalie mask. Um, so there'll be no Friday the 13th Jason masks without him. I think he got in a, he had a pretty big cut across his face, um, requiring many stitches. And I think that kind of made him realize I need to protect my face. Um, but he deserves to be on this list because not only did he invent the goalie mask, but he also won six Stanley Cups with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, considered by many to be one of the greatest goaltenders of all time. And this is also a, a very s- scarce set, the 1955 Parker set. It's a total pop between SGC and PSA of just 412 cards graded of this card. Number 17, the 2015 Upper Deck Young Guns Connor McDavid. Uh, he's currently the best player in the NHL. He's incredibly fast. And uh, honestly, if he continues to have success, he could easily be ranked higher on this list. Um, but uh, you know, you know, he's still pretty early on in his career. I think he's in his eighth season, and so it's it's I think it's too early to put him higher up on this list. Um, uh, but a PSA ten currently goes for three thousand um, dollars, and Young Guns is the card to get in hockey. Next, another Young Guns, number sixteen. The 2005 Upper Deck Young Guns Alexander Ovechkin. He's currently chasing Gretzky's career goal record. We'll see if he gets there. Um, if he does break that record, then uh, I think we could put him even higher up on this list. Um, if it wasn't for Sidney Crosby, I think he would be considered the, the best player of his era. Um, some some would consider him to be better than um, Sidney Crosby, but I think Sidney Crosby ha- has definitely taken um, more of the uh, of the I guess the popularity. Um, away from Ovechkin. Um, uh, but this card actually in a PSA 10 goes for $4,000 currently. So it goes for more than Connor McDavid and more than this next player at number 15, the 2005 upper deck young guns, Sidney Crosby. 
Um, I think money would, would, would agree with this statement that he is the best player in the two thousands and, and 2010s. Um, and he's, he was one of the most lauded prospects ever in the history of hockey. And for the most part, he, he lived up to it. Um, I, like I said, he, he He's no longer the top player in hockey. I think that that torch has been passed to Connor McDavid, but um, you know Sidney Crosby is certainly re- getting up there in age. Um, and a PSA ten right now goes for three thousand dollars, so it's this, it's the same price as the Connor McDavid. Um, right now, Ovechkin's a little bit higher. I don't know if that's because he's getting close to breaking Gretzky's career record, uh, um, but. You could really swap these these three players, Sidney Crosby, Ovechkin, and McDavid, around in this list. Um, they're all very close um, in terms of price. All right, number 14, the 1986 Opeechee Patrick Waugh, um, considered one of the best goalies of all time. I mean, I haven't had him higher than Jock, but, uh, yeah, there's over 4,000 of these P, um, graded by PSA, but it's actually a, a pretty condition sensitive set. There's only 90 PSA 10s, so very tough. And uh, yeah, Patrick Waugh is considered by many to be the best goalie of all time. So that's why he's at number 14. At number 13, the 1980 Opeechee Mark Messier. Uh, Messier is, is yeah, I think we all know his name. He's played 26. He's played 26 years, five Stanley Cups, third most career points in NHL history. He's behind uh, Yami Yager and Wayne Gretzky. And he played with Wayne Gretzky for the Oilers. They're very much this Jordan, Scottie Pippen duo. And when when Gretzky left um, the Oilers, uh, Messier proved that he's still a great player even without Gretzky, and he he, he won his his own Stanley Cup without him. Really kind of securing his legacy. Number 12, the 1971 Opeechee uh, Guy Lafleur. Uh, Guy won five Stanley Cups. He's an all-time leading scorer for the Canadians, which is a big deal because I've mentioned many Canadians on, on this list so far. And this design is just so early 1970s. I, I love the look of it. Number 11, the 1953 Parkhurst Jean Beliveau. Uh, you know, this is a rookie card, and Beliveau won 10 Stanley Cups for the Canadians, considered a top 10 player. It's a very condition sensitive set, too. And there's a total pop of just 695 cards, so it's a tough card to come by. All right, now we're into the top 10. At number 10, the 1951 in Parkhurst, Maurice Richard, the Rockets. Uh, he's one of the first players to score 50 goals in one season and, and the first to score 500 goals for his career. Uh, really one of the most dominant hockey scorers um, back in the day. And uh, he played his entire career with the Montreal Canadiens. He's always regarded as one of, uh, one of the top players. 10 the top five greatest hockey players of all time on those types of lists and this 1951 parkhurst uh, set is very significant because this is the first hockey card set post world war ii and parkhurst is a, is a big name in hockey um it, it was the hockey card set to get before opeachy and tops came along and uh the, the 1951 parkhurst is it's, it's a pretty crude looking set i mean the 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 cardboard's very cheap looking. It looks almost like strip cards for the 1920s or 30s. Um, but there's some key cards to get in the set, and, and one of them being this uh, Maurice Richard card, which is, in my opinion, still very undervalued. There's a total pop of just 680 of this card between SGC and PSA, so a, a, a pretty short printed set. All right, at number nine, the 1923 V145 1 Patterson, Howie Morenz. Uh, the V145 1 uh, William Patterson series um, from 1923 often represents the cornerstone of a vintage hockey uh, collection. Just a very important set for hockey collectors. Um, it's the, the set um, to get in the 1920s. And. Uh, Howie Morenz is considered one of the first stars of the league. 
considered by many to be the best hockey player actually for the from the first half of the 20th century so this this rookie card of his is very significant to hockey collectors um and he had a he had a very short career he he broke his leg playing and due to the complications from his leg injury um he, he died at age 34 i believe like blood clots formed in his leg um, so it's, it was really sad. I mean, at the time of his death, he, death, he held the record for most career points. Um, and this is a these are hard cards to come by. It's a total pop of just seventy seven, um, and 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 a PSA three goes for about fifteen thousand dollars. Now there's a nineteen twenty four card, um, which looks different. The 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 borders are different than nineteen twenty four, but the nineteen twenty three one is the card to get of. Of Howie, um, it's his rookie card, and all his cards are quite valuable. But this is this is his rookie one. All right, at number eight, the 1910 C56 Art Ross, number eight and twelve. Uh, there's he has two cards in the set, and Art Ross is considered the best defender in the early era. He was one of the first players to skate up the ice with the puck, as opposed to just passing it on. And the Art, Tro- Art Ross Trophy is, of course, named after Art Ross. And it's it's an award given to the player of the most points in a season. So you hear the name Art Ross every year. Um, and, you know, these two these two cards in the set, number 8 and number 12, equal value, equal print run. But the print, one is, print run is very low. There's approximately 150 total um, graded between SGC and PSA of each one of these cards. So a, a still a tough card to come by. And at number seven, the 1995 Opeachy Mario Lemieux, or Mario Lemieux, however you want to pronounce his name. <laughs> uh, uh, Lemieux is one of the most dominant players in the 80s and 90s. He won three hard trophies, which is uh, hockey's MVP trophy, two Stanley Cups. He battled a lot of health issues, um, but he could have been up there as one of the greatest of all time had it not been for those uh, health issues, and then he became even bigger of a of a icon when he when he bought the Penguins in 1999, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and, and essentially saved the franchise. A PSA 10 currently sells for around fifty five thousand dollars. It's a tough card to find a PSA 10. There's six thousand graded, so in general, it's a it's, you know basically a junk wax card, but it's very hard to find it in a high grade. And I think you could put uh, Lemieux over Sidney Crosby as the best. Uh, Penguins player of all time. He just has he has one more heart trophy than Sidney Crosby, um, but it's tough. You know, Sidney Crosby is also just a, a great a great player. All right, number six, the 1958 tops Bobby Hull, the Golden Jet. He's unquestionably one of the greatest hockey players ever to take the ice. He played 18 seasons for the Chicago Black Sox, uh, known for having one of the most powerful slap shots. Estimated to be around 118 miles per hour. Uh, PSA eights currently go for around 60 grand. So just goes to show this is a this is a tough card to find um, in high grade. Tough card to find in general. Um, there's only 694 of these cards graded by SEC and PSA. I mean that that is a rare that's a rare card for um, for such, such a significant player as Bobby Hull. And, and and 58 tops is just in general for hockey is just. You don't see a lot of them out there. All right, so at number five, the 1923 V145-1 Patterson, Bert uh, Corbeau. Um, so this is the essentially the 1933 Gaudi Lajeway of hockey cards. It's the most famous short printed card in hockey. Um, Bert was just an average player. Um, but why this is so short printed is, is there's a... Um, if you assembled all 40 cards from the set, you would get a pair of skates. And, you know, back in the 20s, a pair of skates um, was not cheap. And so they purposely short printed this card. And there's not a lot out there. There's only 16 uh, total graded of this card. So very, very scarce. Uh, you know, I, I think this is even scarcer than the 1933 Gaudi Lajeway. Um, and, and a lot of them are, are, are hole punched. Meaning, meaning some kid did collect the whole set and got the skates, and then the manufacturer returned it with the whole punch. Um, all right, number four, the 1911 C55 Imperial Tobacco uh, 
George Vesna. This is his rookie card. This is often considered the Honus Wagner of hockey, of, of hockey cards. You, you hear that phrase a lot when when referring to the uh, C55 uh, Vesna card. Uh, he, he's one of the first truly great goalies. Um, the league's best goaltender trophy is named after him. You know, it's like the Cy Young Award for hockey. Uh, Vesna um, second and third year cards go for for some good money as well. But this is often the card that you think of, honestly, when you think of pre-war hockey cards. And it's there's not a lot out there. It's a total pop of just 269. That's kind of a running theme here with, with hockey cards, vintage hockey cards. There's just not a lot out there. All right, at number three, the 1966 Topps USA Test Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr is, the, is considered by most to be the greatest defenseman of all time. And the 66 Topps hockey cards, um, they, they featured bilingual backs, the regular Topps cards, but the, the English-only ones were considered um, U.S. test issues. And they're much, much, much more limited than the, the normal 1966 Topps cards. Now, I, you could put the normal 1996 Topps Bobby Orr on this list as well at number three. I wanted to mix it up a bit by you doing the USA test issue. They look almost identical except like I said the backs on the tests are English only and in the fronts of the USA tests have usually have a little kind of white sliver uh, on the board on the front border but there's a total pop of just 155 of the USA tests um, just very rare about 10 times rarer than the regular but the regular only has 1440 which is quite low and, and this is considered one of the most coveted cards in the hobby um, it's kind of a lazy design too, by Tops. I mean, it's almost an identical design as as eleven years prior with the nineteen fifty five Bowman baseball sets with the with the TV design. All right, at number two, the nineteen fifty one Parkhurst Gordie Howe, Mister Hockey. I mean, what can you say about Mister Hockey? He played in twenty six seasons across five decades. That's crazy. His first game was in 1946, and his last game was in 1980. And many old-timers consider him to be the best hockey player of all time. And this this Parkhurst car, the 1951 Parkhurst Gordie Howe, to many diehard hockey collectors, they considered this to be the equivalent of the 1952 Topps mantle. Um, you often see it described that way. They came out roughly the same time period. Um, and there's only a total pop of 781, so much scarcer than the so-called scarce 1952 tops Mickey Mantle card. A tough grade, too. There are no 10s. There's just one 9. And not too many of these have been graded 6 and above. Now, you know, he, he his 1954 tops card is also very popular and iconic, but I had to go with just one Gordie Howe. I'm just only going, going with one card per player on this list. Um, but... Yeah, this card can go for big money in high grades. A PSA 8.5 went for $205,000. You know, not not the prettiest card on the list, not even close. It's it's oftentimes the the cardboard on these uh, on these cards are, have been toned. Uh, they look very much like strip cards, like I mentioned. Um, but this is a a key key card to get for any hockey collector. All right, at so number one, probably no surprise to many. The 1979 Opeachy Wayne Gretzky, easily the most recognizable hockey card in the hobby, and this is the most expensive card um, of any hockey card. This is PSA 10 sold for 3.7 million dollars, and the regular Tops version came out 1.2 million dollars. So, you know, there was Opeachy was made in Canada, and Tops was made in the United States and distributed in the United States. But many people consider the Opeachy Wayne Gretzky be the the version it gets. You know, Wayne Gretzky is from Canada. He won a lot of the Stanley Cups in Canada. Um, so the the pop between Tops and Opeachy is about the same, but the Opeachy oftentimes sells for more, despite it being kind of a cruder looking card. A lot of times the Opeachy cards have this rough cut on the right side, um, but uh, this is. Definitely the most iconic card in, in hockey. Most important, I mean, Wayne Gretzky's records are just going to be untouchable. Even if uh, Ovechkin, you know, 
beats him in total goals scored for the season. Um, <laughs> he's got a long way to go to get total points. All right, so let me know what you think of this list, uh, who I who I might have missed. Um, thanks for watching.